today we are going to be surprising one very special little girl. One of my best friend's daughters sent this to me and asked if her Uncle Gunner could make her this dress, and we are not going to let her down today. I don't have a child size mannequin, so I'm going to buy a dress pattern and just alter it so that it fits the exact pattern of the dress she sent me. Now let's cut out that fabric and then start stitching the bodice together. After we've got the bodice stitched, it's time to start adding on those little gold embellishments just like her Barbie dress. Now it's time to work on the skirt. For a finishing touch, let's add a Gunner Deathridge label and then pack it up and ship it off to her and wait until you guys see her reaction. Today we are going to this video is for all my horse girls out there and all the horse girls at heart. I found this amazing Carolina Herrera horse print on tulle and we are going to make a 1950s poofy skirt, like the perfect poofy skirt. I started off by French seaming all of the tulle netting and if you don't know how to do this, I do have a tutorial on my YouTube. Afterwards, we're going to press that flat and beautiful. Now let's use the shearing foot which gathers all of the tulle together. I'm going to do this on both the horse layer and on the other layers. I've decided that I'm going to use an orange and a pink tulle to kind of create this beautiful iridescent sheen to the skirt. So let's go ahead and sure those together. Now that we've got all of them gathered, let's go ahead and sew them all together. As you can see, there's a lot of tool to work with in here. I'm just gonna give that a quick overlock to hold everything in place and keep it narrow and then attach it to this waistband and boom, there you have it. The perfect 1950s horse girl skirt. This video is for all- I'll see you after the function. Strike a pose, 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 Today we are going to transform this room into a 1900s carnival inspired fortune teller tent. These bungalows are on the Savage Ranch and many artists make their way through here leaving their mark and my mark is going to be this bungalow suite. First we removed all of the furniture and then we started doing a really beautiful red wash on the walls. We wanted them to look old and kind of beat up. Then we started adding in really fun pops and I started sewing these fabrics together that were going to be the ceiling. There was so much fabric that we could not resist doing a little mini photo shoot while we had it. Afterwards it was time to start stapling it to the ceiling in really beautiful little gathers so that it made it feel like an old school tent. Fabrics and lighting fixtures are one of the main ways you can transform a space and I always make sure to add some custom gunner elements. It was important for me when designing this space to really take into consideration that I wanted you to be transported. This is where artists are going to stay while they're on their ranch working on their own art and I wanted to give them something to be inspired by. The rich colors and textures are so inviting and it really gives you that feeling of a 1900s carnival. I hope you guys love watching this come together and you should definitely check out the Savage Ranch. Today we are going to tell me you're a fan of Legally Blonde without telling me you're a fan of Legally Blonde. Today I'm making a dress inspired by the character that stole my 11-year-old gay heart, Elle Woods.
I want this dress to feel super fun and super flirty and very Elle Woods appropriate, and I'm going to be using this iridescent silk fabric I found in downtown Los Angeles to do so. I started the process by creating my pattern and then cutting out all of my pieces, and now I'm just going to start stitching in the middle of this corset style bodice. This isn't like a legitimate corset, but it is going to have some elements of that, and I'm going to have some boning as well. I'm actually going to expose the boning on the outside of the dress because I love the look of it. Now that I've got the bodice finished and ready to go, it's time to start working on that skirt. I've sewn in two massive circular flounces into the sides of this very fitted pencil skirt, and I think it's going to give me that very beautiful flirty edge I'm looking for. And here's the finished product. I think it's a very Gunner Deathridge way of saying legally blonde. Tell me you're a f for Valentine's Day, I wanted to remake one of my favorite dresses from one of my favorite films, and that's the red dress Julia Roberts wears in Pretty Woman. And wait until you see who we're sending this to. It's one of my favorite TikTokers. I started the process by creating my pattern and then draping the chiffon on the dress form. This dress has so many perfectly placed chiffon gathers, so I did a gathering stitch and then pulled the chiffon and then started draping it on the form and pinning where I would like for the pleats to stay. After doing a quick hand stitch, I trimmed away the excess fabric and then I stitched over the edges to help them hold their shape. And now it's time to start working on that off the shoulder drape and then stitching that into the top of the bodice. The last step of the process was to start attaching the skirt and adding in those beautiful details that really help sell that beautiful couture feeling cap. As a self-taught designer, I learned so much while making this dress and was so excited to pack it up and ship it off to my friend Julian Brzezinski. Well, nothing else is gonna fit into this dress, I'll tell you that. Maybe something in this box. For Valentine's Day, I today we are making one of my most requested dresses ever on TikTok, and that is Rose's sink dress from Titanic, the one that she goes into the water in. I started the process by creating my pattern on my dress form. I used a cotton muslin just to get everything where I wanted it, and then outlined it on the dress form. Afterwards, I made my pattern perfect, and then I cut it out of my fabric. Next, I started stitching the base of the bodice together, and I thought it was the perfect opportunity to use my brand new Panasonic 360 iron. It's cordless, it's lightweight, and it presses my seams flat and beautiful. Now let's start creating the pleats that are going to create the bodice of the dress. After I've got them all pinned out in the different color sections, I'm just going to use my Panasonic iron and steam them while they're there to help them hold their shape. Her nightgown look had this delicate lace at the top of the bodice as well as running down the front of the dress, so I'm going to be creating that as well. The last step is to attach the three layers of chiffon skirt, and because it's chiffon, you need to give it a good press. I am so proud of the way this recreation came out. I love the way it moves in the wind, and I think it really captures the essence of Rose's dress. Today I'm discount fabric shopping, and I'm going to be making a $10 masquerade ball gown. I found this black sheer striped organza and I'm going to overlay it with this scarlet red satin and I'm going for this very old school circus vibe. Wait till you see the reveal at the end of this video guys. I started the process by creating my pattern and then perfecting it on the cotton muslin. Afterwards it was time to cut out our fabric and make sure that our stripes match. I'm going to be appliquing this black stripe to the red satin to make my outside shell and then I'm going to overlock the edges that way if we need to take in the dress we can. Now it's time to stitch that pattern together and then press everything flat and beautiful. Now that the bodice is finished it's time to start working on the skirt which is going to have multiple layers of pickups and gathers and I'm going to be doing that using the shirring foot. And now it's time to sew the skirt to the bodice, add the zipper, and I wanted to give you guys that full masquerade fantasy so I drove all the way out to the Savage Ranch in Temecula, California to meet up with my friend and artist Love Bailey, also known as the Scarlet Woman. Today on Discount I found this Moschino deadstock fabric at Mood Fabrics today, and I'm going to be using it to make these tote bags. I'm going to be mixing the inside with that stripe and adding that beautiful upholstery velvet to the bottom. The first step was to cut out my pattern and then start working on the harness that's going to be on the front of the bag. I'm going to secure it to the bag by adding these nylon webbing that are going to also become the straps. After I've got all of that stitched on, it's time to start stitching the bag together. I've also attached the velvet at the bottom of the bag, and now we're just going to overlock those seams and then flip the bag inside out. This is also going to show you what the bag is going to look like, which I think is a fun part. And now I'm just going to press the sides of this bag flat and beautiful, making sure to avoid that nylon webbing so I don't melt it. Now let's work on the lining. I'm going to be using this stripe as the pocket as well, but I'm going to make sure that they clash a little bit because why not? It's the inside of the bag. And I'm just going to start stitching that on. Then I'm going to add a custom Gunner Deathridge label to the bag and add the top straps that are going to be held on by these silver rings. I'm going to be selling a very limited amount of these. I've got them on my site and that link is in my bio, y'all. I found this Moschino Death. Today I'm going to transform a regular sweatshirt into a David Rose fantasy. And if you know me, you know I love Schitt's Creek, so let's do it. All you need is some fringe, a seam ripper, and a regular sweatshirt. I'm going to start by seam ripping along the underneath of the sleeve and around the sleeve cap. 
You could cut off the serged edge, but it will make the whole entire sleeve a little smaller, so I'm just going to use the seam ripper. Now I'm going to line this up here to get the right measurement of the fringe and start pinning that into the underneath of the sleeve. Now just fold it back over, pin everything in, make sure the fringe is out of the way, and then you can stitch that in place. After stitching, I'm going to overlock so it holds the seam tight, but you can also use a zigzag stitch if you don't have an overlock machine. Now let's insert the fringe back into the sweatshirt. I've also pinned some fringe around the entire circle, and we're just going to stitch all the way around, and then we're going to overlock that as well. And here's what the finished product looks like. It is very over the top. It is very David Rose, and it's also very me, and I hope you guys liked watching it come together. On a scale of one to I'm going to get beat up by an angry local, where do we see this look fall? Today I'm going to transform a regular sweatshirt into a David Rose. I gave myself a $10 budget and went digging for fabric at this discount store in downtown Los Angeles. Somehow I managed to make it out with this beautiful cranberry and peach dyed satin. So let's make a boho dress fit for running through the fields with it. I started the process by creating my pattern and then correcting it using this ruler from Joanne. Afterwards, it was time to cut out my fabric and begin stitching together the bodice. After stitching the bodice, it was time to press everything flat and beautiful. Also, it's worth noting that this fabric slipped around everywhere. It was super hard to work with, and this video almost didn't happen. And now let's work on our sleeves. I'm going to have a massive bishop sleeve at the bottom, so let's go ahead and do our gather stitch, and then pull one thread to pull the fabric together. I also found this cranberry lace at the fabric store, so I'm going to be using that on the cuffs as well as an accent throughout the bottom of the skirt. I'm going to have three separate layers that are going to be sheer in the middle, so that way you get that perfect edge of bohemian flair. I think this dress is so romantic and so chic. It reminds me of something that Florence from Florence and the Machine would wear, and I hope you guys love watching it come together. I found this super chic fabric. It has this incredible print. It almost reminds me of like Picasso's early studies. I thought it could be a really cool mask design, so let's make one. The outside layer of the mask is obviously going to have the handprint, but I am going to back it with a high thread count cotton just so it's got an extra layer in there. And I'm also going to be adding a layer of satin that will touch your face. And believe me, this rayon satin is super soft. After stitching the lining together with the outside of the fabric, I'm just going to flip it inside out. And then you guessed it, it is time to press this mask flat and beautiful. And now let's go ahead and fold over the tabs that are going to hold the elastic. I'm just going to do a little stitch over top of those. And now let's thread the elastic through. This version of elastic is actually more like a jersey fabric. It's woven and it's super soft and it's rounded so it doesn't put a lot of pressure through your ear. I'm using a safety pin to thread it through but a lot of people use a turner. I just don't know where mine's at. And here's what the finished product looks like. It's super comfortable and I have a very limited amount of them on my website. That link is in my bio. I just got a box of mystery fabric in the mail, and it turns out it's this really wild print from opening ceremony from my friends at Brightex Fabrics in San Francisco. They also sent the same fabric to official Hambly, so let's make a dress out of it. Because this print is so wild, I'm gonna do like a half chartreuse dress and half with the print, so it's really going to be a statement dress, and I'm gonna start stitching that together. Afterwards, we're gonna press it flat and beautiful. I'm also going to overlock those seams because I really want them to hold tight. It's important when you're working with fabrics that fray a lot to make sure that they don't. I'm also gonna have little black straps on this dress because I think it's gonna be a nice graphic, and at the end, I'm gonna pair it with this beautiful black leather belt just because I think it brings a little bit of like a rock and roll edge to this print. This dress is screaming for a lot of accessories and a bright summer day. The last step was to add a zipper and then to show you guys what the finished product looks like. I have to say I'm pretty stoked on the dress. The pattern was scared me a little bit at first, but I think it turned out super cute. What do you guys think? I just got a box. Let's recreate the coat that Ella Imhoff wore on inauguration day. It was originally by Miu Miu and also my favorite look of the day. I started the process by creating the pattern and then cutting it out, making sure to match my plaits. I then started stitching together the jacket and pressed my seams flat and beautiful. The next step is to start working on the lining as well as to do my welt pockets. I'm also going to be making this collar that has this decorative edge on it and trimming away to make a little scallop. I added these orange and topaz crystals using the E6000 glue that holds everything together. I also hand stitched on some of these glass bugle beads and added a vintage button to complete the look. If you enjoyed watching this come together and you would like to see some more of the details, I'm adding a full YouTube video to my channel tonight. I received a package from my friend and fellow Project Runway contestant Brittany Allen and she sent me this incredible mustard cheetah abstract fabric. It gave me capital Hunger Games citizen vibes and today we're going to make a dress inspired by it.
I started the process by draping my pattern using this cotton muslin and then tracing out my style lines. I then began to stitch the bodice together and I pressed those seams flat and beautiful. Brocades are my favorite fabrics to work with and this one was no exception. And now I can begin assembling the rest of the bodice. Anytime you sew a curve, make sure that you clip the edges so when you flip it inside out, it lays flat and beautiful. Always remember to press as you go. After the bodice was finished, I started working on the skirt, which is going to have these massive pleats and multiple layers of these beautiful silk organzas that I found. After gathering both layers of organza, I attached them to the skirt and then overlocked the edges so they were nice and clean. After I finished the dress entirely, I drove out to the desert to shoot this dress in an environment that I felt was only fitting. If you liked watching this come together, you'll love watching the full version on my YouTube. I have been obsessed with mood rings since I was a kid and I wondered if there was a nail polish out there that could do that similar effect. So I found this one on Amazon and today we're going to give it a try and see what it's like. The kit comes with a black gel polish as well as the color changing solution and a little brush to do these designs, but they obviously overestimate what I'm capable of doing when it comes to painting. So I went ahead and applied the black polish and now we're going to open up the color changing polish and allow that to dry on the nail without using the LED light. As it's drying, I'm starting to notice that there are some of these kind of like mood ring vibes starting to show through which is super exciting because my expectations for this polish were super low now that it's dried all the way I'm going to apply a gel top coat and go ahead and pop that under the LED light to cure that as well and now it's time to put it to the test I've got a little bit of cold water here I'm just gonna dunk it into the cold water to see what happens and you guys it went back to black like Amy Winehouse style back to black I went ahead and used my blow dryer on it and look at these colors shining through I am obsessed for coming into this with such low expectations I have to say I am blown I have been obsessed with mood rings I keep getting asked to do ASMR videos, although I don't think they will be very popular. We're gonna do it today. We're making some tote bags for my contest winners today out of this incredible fabric that I found at Mood. After stitching the body of the bag together, I pressed it flat and beautiful on the appropriate setting. Afterwards, I overlocked the seams to keep them strong. And now let's stitch in a Gunner Deathridge woven label. Now that I've got the label stitched in, I can then start working on attaching the webbing that are going to be the handles. The webbing that runs up the length of the bag will also act as the handles so that the bag is very strong. Now let's work on the sides of the bag and make sure that they are very secured with an overlock stitch as well. This is the last part of the process. And there you have my tote bags that I'm shipping off to the winners of my contest. Hope you guys enjoyed watching. The best thing to come out of my new year so far is the show Bridgerton and especially the character of Penelope. I'm so excited about this new show. That costuming is perfect. They broke all of the rules of Regency in all of the best ways and today we're going to do the same. I started the process by creating my pattern and then cutting out this chartreuse charmeuse as well as overlapping it with this beautiful beaded orange lace. I found them in downtown Los Angeles and now I'm just going to base them together to create them as one layer and then work on our lining that is this two-way shift taffeta. After stitching the darts of the bodice together and attaching my lining, I pressed everything flat and beautiful. Then I began hand tacking with a needle and thread the orange lace to the underlinings. Now let's attach our sleeve. I'm going to do a gathered sleeve to give that perfect little bit of Regency flair. And I'm going to do two rows of a basting stitch and just pull those together with my fingers and attach some of this trim to the bottom. I think it turned out quite beautiful. Costume design brings me so much joy and I've really enjoyed recreating this Bridgerton look for you guys. Maybe eventually I can costume design shows for you all to be inspired by.